Throughout the 1820s and 1830s, slave traders like Isaac Franklin and John Armfield, partially operating out of their Alexandria headquarters, fundamentally transformed the domestic slave trade. At the forefront of this push to organize, institutionalize, and industrialize the domestic slave trade, Franklin and Armfield adapted new business practices to their trafficking operations. They organized a network of agents located throughout the Chesapeake region, from the eastern shore to the Blue Ridge Mountains, from Baltimore down to Richmond, that supplied their business with a steady supply of enslaved bodies. A small fleet of fast-sailing vessels owned by the firm made regular voyages between Alexandria and New Orleans. Credit was extended on generous terms to prospective purchasers of enslaved labor. One period observer called their operation at 1315 Duke Street a slave factory. Others used terms like slave pen, slave jail, slave prison, or barracoon. One Alexandria tax assessor went so far as to call the site Franklin's Black Hole on the city's official tax assessment. Despite the feelings of abolitionists, anti-slavery advocates, religious groups, and repulsed local officials, operating behind sites like the slave factory were legal, economic, and social systems designed to strengthen and support race-based slavery. An important lesson to learn from these sites is that because of these systems, most things that happened at these places were entirely legal, supported by the full legal authority of the state, and encouraged by economic incentives. The archaeological record at sites like 1315 Duke, Bruins Jail, also in Alexandria, and Lumpkins in Richmond is shaped by the use of those sites. Those held captive here were only here for days or weeks. Generally, they did not bring with them much in the way of material culture, aside from the clothes they were wearing and a few personal items. Food, dishes, and other objects were provided by the jailers. Sites like these are sites of confinement, and their material assemblages more resemble other prisons and institutional sites than domestic ones. The end to the operation of the slave jail complex at 1315 Duke Street came on the morning of May 24, 1861. Alexandria overwhelmingly supported the Virginia Ordinance of Secession the previous day, and by dawn on the 24th, Union troops had crossed the Potomac River from Washington, D.C. and occupied northern Virginia in one of the first military operations of the American Civil War. The site, with its architecture of confinement already built but not being used, was then requisitioned for the duration of the Civil War as a military prison, mainly holding drunk, unruly, or misbehaving Union soldiers before being returned to their units or taking disciplinary actions. Other portions of the site were used as barracks for contraband laborers, newly freed African Americans who had escaped slavery and come into the Union lines, and as a hospital. Most of the slave jail complex was torn down following the war, and the surviving structure at 1315 Duke Street was reworked as first residential apartments and then offices. It was purchased by the City of Alexandria in March 2020 with the intent of expanding the exhibit currently in the basement of the building and to transform the building into a museum of the domestic slave trade. The history of the site, the slave dealers that ran it, the inner workings of the businesses that operated here, the names of thousands of individuals taken from this city to the Deep South are all being uncovered and metaphorically excavated from the archive in another historic moment of national tension, one that reminds us that white supremacy is still with us in the present.